Notice this officer. First of all, I want you to remember he's a Roman. This is the enemy of Israel, uh, but not the enemy of Jesus Christ. And so we find these words in uh, Luke uh, chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Uh, now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. And when he had heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him, saying, that he is worthy for whom he should do this, for he loveth our nation and has built us a synagogue. So first of all, the elders come. This is what his intercession is all about. The fact that we go on someone's behalf, we go for someone like we did this morning. We took those names that were given to us and we took them before the Lord's and asked him to do a healing, just as going on right here for this uh, Roman uh, soldier uh, right here. So first of all, there was a quest being made of Jesus. And then secondarily, there's what Jesus uh, reveals and uh, what he reveals to Jesus. He tells the Savior all he needs to do is to speak the word and the servant would be healed. What great faith. In fact, it's going to catch Jesus and he's going to make mention of it. When Jesus went with them and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent his friends to him saying unto him, Lord, trouble not yourself. For I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Therefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say a word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. So when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said to the people that followed him, I say to you, I have not found so great, no, uh, so great faith, no, not in Israel. I don't think he's talking just about the nation of Israel. I think he's talking about the person Israel, the founder of the nation of Israel. When you compare his faith to the faith of this centurion, Jesus said, I don't think, I don't think Israel had this kind of faith. Faith enough, listen, you have authority, he says to Jesus. Simply say the word. That's what authority gives us. As a young man, when I was in the Navy, I had those who were under me, and I could order them, I could command them, I could say to them, go do this. And bless God, they better go get it done, let me tell you. Because that authority wasn't my own. It was authority of the U.S. Navy. In the respect of Jesus Christ, it's not just his authority as the Son of God, but it's also his authority as far as the Father had sent him to do these things. And that centurion understood that God has authority over this world. So if you just say it, I know it's going to happen. What great faith that we see in this man. And in verse 10 then, the officer, as we will see, received that, what he was asking for. In verse 10, And they that were sent returning to the house found the servant whole that had been sick. Because someone had interceded, and because that intercession allowed that man to express his faith, and because he had expressed his faith, whatsoever you ask in my name that you shall receive, and because of his great faith, Jesus Christ spoke the word, go your way, your servant is healed. And when he gets home, sure enough, that man is off of his sick bed and going about doing whatever his officer had commanded him to do. You will notice that faith was brought into this one, but notice this, the, in the resurrection of the son, there's no faith on the part of anybody. Jesus sometimes just wants to work. And sometimes he will work in our lives when we don't even know it. This woman had no idea what was about to come. She wasn't seeking for him. She wasn't looking for him. Just look at what happens in our next story then. Uh, down to verse 11 and 12. There's a brokenhearted mother weeping as she's marrying her own son. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him. Remember, many, because he didn't just have the 12. We said he also had that additional 70. We don't know how many he had. We know at least he sends out 72, or uh, uh, 12 plus 70. He sends out 82 at one time. He may have had more disciples than that. We don't know. But 
many of his disciples had gone with him through the city called Nain. Now when they came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of that city was with her. So there's a large procession of people. Now I want you to notice the tenderheartedness of Jesus Christ as we behold this next scene in verse 13. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, weep not. She didn't come to him. No one was interceding on her behalf. This is just something that Jesus Christ saw. And sometimes he looks into our lives and he just sees things that need to be fixed. And so he moves upon him with his own compassion from his own heart. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, weep not. And he came and he touched the bear and they that bear it stood still and said, young man, I say to thee, arise. How much faith did this young man have? He's dead, <laughs> right? I suppose in heaven, if that's where he's at, he knows who Jesus is, and I suppose he's full of faith, but that's not mentioned to us. Jesus Christ simply says to this young man, you lousy buzzard, look what you did. You went off and left your mama. Who's going to take care of her now? He came and he touched it, and he, the, the bearer stood still, and he said, young man, I say to thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. Wow. And there came fear upon all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen among us, and that God has visited his people. And this rumor of him, why do they call it a rumor? And this rumor, King James, and this rumor went out forth throughout all Judea, and throughout all the region round about. What great power, what great compassion. We don't, we never doubt the power of God. Sometimes though we doubt his compassion, will he do it for me? We know he can do it, but will he do it for me? That's where we lack. This woman wasn't even asked. Jesus did not approach her, did not speak to her, did not say, would you like me to do this for you? Well, let me see some faith on your part and I'll do it. He didn't say that. She was heartbroken, and her broken heart caused his heart to break. And so he goes to the son, said, you lousy buzzer, get out of there, take care of mama. And he did, he got up real quick. Immediately he gets up, and immediately he begins to take care of his mama. These wonderful stories of faith, and so now we go, and we're going to reassure a prophet. This prophet, of course, you're going to know right away is John. John is imprisoned. And I suppose being imprisoned can be a depressing place. And so it's no wonder that John begins to think over in his head what he was expecting the Messiah to do. Michael did a great job preaching on this, I think, when he took us through Matthew. And so I'm not going to labor it a whole lot. I'm just going to kind of go through the paces uh, with you to remind you uh, of some of those things. So look at verse 18 through uh, 20. John is going to make a request of Jesus. And the disciples of John showed him all these things, all these miracles that Jesus has been doing. And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And when the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou the one that should come, or look we for another? Good question. Now, Michael did a great job explaining to us, and you're going to see a little bit in this as we take a look at it. John is expecting a different kind of Jesus than he got. And remember when John is preaching, he said he's going to come and the, the winnowing fan is going to be in his hand and the firebrand he's going to... And so he's expecting this big fiery preacher, and Jesus isn't very fiery. He's just going by, he's healing uh, blessed be this, blessed be that. And John was expecting stomping feet and pounding fists, and uh, this isn't quite what I expected. And so take a look at these uh, words, his reply to John in uh, verse 21 through 35. And in the same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind he gave sight. And Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, deaf hear, 
The dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, look at this special phrase that he puts into John, verse 23. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. When the messengers of John were departed, they began to speak unto the people concerning John. And he went out into the wilderness. What went ye out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But they went out. What went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that are gorgeously apparelled, live delicately, are in king's houses. But when, what went you out for to see? A prophet? Yes. Oh, I better give you another one. I forgot. I broke this. But what went you out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him were the pub and, and, and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees, those lousy buzzards are everywhere. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the council.